Amen. Thank you so much. Take the Word of God with me, please. And let's find the book of Acts. Acts chapter number 20, please. Acts chapter number 20. And uh, we'll read just a couple of verses here for the message. And we'll see a few other parts then of the passage to go along with that. But notice with me, please, in Acts chapter number 20, this is a wonderful chapter. There's so much in here uh, that we can only briefly touch on. But Acts chapter number 20, let's begin reading verse 34. By way of context, Paul here is speaking to the Ephesian elders of the church and has many things to say to them, some very important things to say that ring throughout the ages uh, for us also. But Paul here is speaking to them in chapter 20 of Acts in verse number 34. He says, Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The message this afternoon will be simply this from verse number 35. It is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Let's bow in prayer together before the message. Father, we again come to you because we need you. We're depending upon you to lead and guide in this message. I pray that every word that's spoken would be, thus saith the Lord, would be honoring and pleasing in your sight. I pray that the words that need to be spoken would be spoken, the words that do not need to be spoken would not be spoken, and that you would lead and guide in all these things. Help our hearts to be attentive. Help us to be willing and ready to respond as the Holy Spirit works on our hearts, speaks to our hearts. Lord, bless the message, I pray. Forgive us, Lord, where we've failed you. Cleanse us, and I pray we would be able to listen and give our full attention. Take distractions, I pray, from our hearts and minds. Thank you for your great love, mercy, and sacrifice. Thank you for the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. Speak to us now, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Acts chapter number 20 here is closer toward the end of Paul's journeys, and he comes through the area once again. And he speaks to these churches, and he reconfirms them, and, and uh, encourages them, strengthens them, and edifies them. And when he comes to Miletus, he sends to Ephesus, and he calls for the elders of the church, and we won't read the entirety of the passage uh, for sake of emphasis today, but he has many things to say to them. And towards the end of this conversation, he has a very important thing to say in verse 35. Now, Paul here, he is telling the people that they will not see his face again. Paul here had gone through Asia in these regions, and he comes now to his final visit to these Ephesian elders. And he tells them, you will not see my face again on this side of heaven. You will not see my face again. Of course, in eternity, we'll be reunited. But you won't see my face again. And he gives a message, a parting message. Um, and I wish I had the time to, to speak through the whole passage. Uh, but there would be too much for that. But he has a parting message for these elders. And he charges them to feed the flock of God, which is among them, to take the oversight as the Holy Ghost has given that to them, and to beware of those who would rise up, not sparing the flock. And this is the job of a pastor, the job of an elder in the church, an overseer, a shepherd, uh, those being synonymous terms, that he is to guard against, and he is to be aware of wolves that would enter into the flock. And he goes on with that warning to say, not only will people enter in among you, not sparing the flock, 
But even of your own selves will men arise, speaking perverse things. Why do they do it? To draw away disciples after them. And this is what a wolf does. This is what someone does that is not under the authority that God has placed, but instead desires to lure disciples after them, rather than to point them uh, not only to the shepherd, but to the chief shepherd, to Christ. Instead, they desire that people would follow them. And Paul here says, this is a warning, that this will happen, and that the best way to prevent these things is to feed the flock of God. And as a pastor, the pastor is to feed the flock so that those uh, members of the flock can know and can understand when a wolf is present. They can know and understand when things are not right. And it's a wonderful thing when the sheep can know without the shepherd telling them, can know that a wolf is present. And the pastor is to help them come to that point. And as he leaves them, he, he says, I commend you to God, to the word of His grace, knowing that I will be gone, that I will not see you again. So I have to commend you to God because the Lord will be with you. And these wolves will arise, but because of the warning I've given, you can know how to respond. Uh, you can know how to stay away from these things. And I want to encourage you today, um, as many times on a Sunday afternoon, I, I speak from my heart um, a little bit more, would say things a little bit maybe different than I normally would. But I want to encourage you to follow. Of course, we're following the Lord. But I would encourage you to follow the shepherd that God has placed in the church because the shepherd knows when a wolf is present. The shepherd knows before anybody else knows. The shepherd understands and sees, and he can help the sheep to see those things. And therefore, when you see something <laughs> that seems wrong, you see something that doesn't seem right, uh, you should trust that intuition. Because God has given that to you. And hopefully, if you have a proper shepherd, he's helped instill that in you to, to see and to know when these things are wrong. And so we must be careful not to follow uh, just anybody, just anybody that says something, but to take those things and, and think about what the Word of God says and to think about, may I say, what the pastor says about those things and to... Uh, and to realize that there are many who do rise up, even among the people, even among the people, they rise up and desire to bring disciples after them. The shepherd has their labor, the responsibility to see these things and to warn the people, but many times they creep in very, very quickly. And it's very advantageous, very helpful for the people to understand, to see these things and to know. And, uh, and, and the sheep that are growing in the Lord can see these things. They can understand them. And, uh, and so many times we feel a, a, a premonition about something. This is something wrong with this. Well, something probably is wrong. Something probably is wrong with it. And many of those things just come out with time. Um, maybe at first it's hard to put the finger on it, but they come out. And things are seen and made open. And the Bible is clear about that, that things do not stay in secret, but things come out into the open. And so I, I want to say that to you, as I believe that is what the Lord wants us to see, to understand in a passage like this. But he comes here to verse 35, and he says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. Now, we don't have these words of the Lord Jesus, um, recorded specifically this way in the Gospels, but we know that he said them because they're recorded in other places, uh, namely in Acts chapter 20. Uh, these words are recorded. We don't have them exactly recorded in another place, but recorded here. And the words that Jesus spoke were, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And I'd like to speak to you on that this afternoon. It is more blessed to give than to receive. Now, Paul... He is the example of this. As we read this passage, we find that he was someone who learned that's more blessed to give 
than to receive. We live in a society and in a country and in a time that loves to receive, loves to receive the praise of men, loves to receive things from men, loves to receive love. But the truth of the matter is, many times are hesitant to give, are hesitant to give. But someone who finds the true blessing of God is not someone who just simply receives everything and takes it in, but someone who is willing to give themselves, to give themselves to God. That person will find that there is greater blessing in that. There is greater blessing in a person who gives than in a person who receives. Now, God has been good to me. Has He been good to you? Amen. He's been good to me, and I can say I've received many things things from the Lord. Haven't you? I've received many, many blessings, many blessings from God. And you could say the same thing if we would recount those things and think about those things, that God has blessed us and we have received many wonderful things that are exceedingly abundant uh, and above even what we asked or thought of. But the truth of the matter is, yes, he's been very good to us, received so many, so many things, but many of the blessings I receive in my life uh, is as a result of giving myself. And you'll find that as you give yourself, as you give to the Lord, then that's the blessed life. The blessed life. The blessed life is not someone who's just pampered um, and given things by others. That's not really the blessed life. But the blessed life is a person who follows Christ in giving themselves and being willing to sacrifice uh, for others. We know that Christ being the greatest example that we have, He gave Himself completely. He gave uh, those years on this earth as He did His public ministry, and then He gave Himself on the cross for my sins and for your sins, that the Lord Jesus gave it all. I think of that song that says, He emptied Himself of all but love and bled and died for Adam's race. Jesus Christ emptied Himself he poured himself out. Do you see that? Do you realize that? He poured himself. He emptied himself so that we could have life. Jesus says in the Gospel according to John, I live, so shall you also live. I live, so shall you also live. Because he gave his life. And because he gave his life for us, we can now also have life. And if you want to live a truly blessed life, you will learn, you will learn that a truly blessed life is a life that gives. A life that gives. And that is where you'll find God's greatest, most, most richest blessings. I would like to give you this afternoon three things that I find in this passage concerning this matter of giving. Number one, please notice with me that it is more blessed to give to the Lord. It is more blessed to give to the Lord. What does Paul say, if you'll look back with me, in verse number 17? And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, uh, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the lying and weight of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. I find here that Paul says, speaking in his own life and from his own life, that is more blessed to give to the Lord. How is he giving to the Lord? He's giving to the Lord by serving the Lord with all humility of mind, with tears, he says, and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. When we serve the Lord, we are giving to the Lord. I think about the times in the Bible when the, the church of Jerusalem was there together and they said, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Lord said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the ministry that I have called him. 
And it says they were ministering to the Lord. What did Jesus say? You, you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Judea, Jerusalem, Samaria, and so on. He says that you, have, you are witnesses unto me. And so when we serve the Lord, we are not just serving other people. Uh, we are serving the Lord Himself. We are servants of Him. And He says, everything I've been doing in my life is because I'm serving the Lord. And by the way, I want to say to you today that sometimes serving may be tiring. Sometimes serving may be depleting. Uh, I think of the story with uh, Martha and Mary. You remember? <laughs> you remember where Martha was serving and she was doing a great job and she was cooking the meals and she had everything going, uh, everything prepared and was working hard. But Mary is there sitting at the feet of Jesus and Martha is, is careful and troubled and she's cumbered about much serving and she says, Lord, bid her that she help me. And the Lord says, well, Mary hath chosen that good part that shall not be taken away from her. And the truth of the matter is, sometimes uh, we, we may get weary, we may get tired uh, as we serve the Lord, but the truth of the matter is, we can continue on because we're not serving people. We're serving God. We're serving the Lord. And when you serve the Lord, you look unto Him as we learned this morning. You look to the Lord. Then you can continue on because we're not serving people. Now, I don't know about you. Maybe I'm the only one. But people have disappointed me time and time again. And therefore, I can't just serve people. I can't just do what I do for people's sake alone. Oh, I love people. I love people and try to serve them and care for them. But ultimately, we're serving the Lord. And when you serve the Lord, you can serve continually, uh, as he says, with humility of mind and with many tears and temptations, these things that came into Paul's life. He was persecuted. He experienced many, many things that we have never experienced, and we have never even grappled with the understanding of what Paul actually experienced. We don't even know. Left for dead, stoned and left for dead, fighting with wild beasts. Many things he went through we don't even imagine. But how is it that he continued how is it that he continued on for the Lord? Because he was serving the Lord. Are you serving the Lord? It is more blessed to give to the Lord. And now, number two, notice with me, please. It is more blessed to give to others. More blessed to give to others. You say, Pastor, I thought you just said we're not serving others. Chiefly, and ultimately, we're serving Christ. But because we're serving Christ, we serve others. Because we serve Christ, we serve others. The greatest thing you ever do is serve Christ. If you serve Christ, you're serving others. And Paul here gives this example. And I believe the order is very important. There's a divine order. He talks about serving the Lord first and then serving the people. I can't serve you unless I'm serving the Lord. It's not an end in itself just to serve the people, but must be serving the Lord. So it's more blessed to give to others. Notice with me, please, in verse number 20. Paul says, And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Oh, I read this in the Lord. Uh, it's a convicting thing for me to read. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul here speaks about how he served the people. He kept back nothing that was profitable. Oh, may God help us. He kept back nothing that was profitable for them, but he showed them, was willing to teach them in the space of three years that he was there. He was willing to teach them publicly and from house to house and to testify to the Jews and the Greeks repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul here is serving others because he's serving Christ. And you and I, if we truly love the Lord and are serving the Lord, we have a desire for the lost to be saved. We have a desire to testify to others the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We love them and care about them because we're serving the Lord. Because we've begun serving the Lord. And by the way, you don't begin 
with loving the lost. You don't begin with loving people because then uh, uh, you'll be disappointed. You won't ever be the servant of God that He wants you to be. But when you begin with serving God and loving God and living for God and doing what He has called you to do, then you love people. When I surrendered to the Lord to serve Him, I did not surrender to serve people. I surrendered to serve God. And because I surrendered to serve God, I now serve people and love people. And God, uh, because I surrendered to Him, He gave me a desire and a love for people uh, to see them saved. And uh, sometimes we say, I, I don't know, I don't, really, I don't really feel that burden in my heart for the lost. Well, that's not where you start. You don't start with a burden for the lost. You don't just try to work up a burden to see lost people saved. Your love for Christ is number one. And when you love the Lord and your service to God, is the most important thing in your life, then you'll love people. Then you'll love to see souls saved. You'll want to testify. You say, I don't, really see, I don't really have a desire to do it. Well, because maybe you're not serving the Lord. When we serve the Lord, then we have a desire. Do you see the divine order? We serve the Lord, and then we serve others. We love others. We serve the lost. We serve Christians. We serve people and love people. And by the way, always remember, people will do wrong. People will disappoint. But Christ doesn't. Christ doesn't disappoint. We're serving God. We're serving the Lord. And by the way, that's not some prideful, boastful thing. Oh, I'm serving God. Look, it's a humiliating, it's a humbling thing to serve God. It's a humbling thing. There's nothing about it to give us pride when we are serving the Lord. Some people, oh, I, I hope sometimes that I haven't done it. May God forgive me if I have. But, you know, you hear sometimes people, I served the Lord and I did this for all these years. I did this for God. I did this for God. I was this for so many years. And I did this and I did this and I did this and I did this. Well, who are you serving? Are you serving God? Or are you serving yourself? We must remember those things. Many times there's a place for testimony. Say, I've seen this happen. And share that with people. But we're not there to give a list of accomplishments. Look what I have done. Because we're serving the Lord. And when you serve the Lord, then you serve others. Notice in verse 26, he says, Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. I cannot say that about myself. I imagine you could not either. I am pure from the blood of all men. I haven't kept anything back. I haven't squandered an opportunity. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. May I just say this, may God help me not to shun to declare all the counsel of God. The tendency of preachers sometimes is to just preach what we want to preach. <laughs> just preach what's easy to preach. But he says, I haven't shunned to declare the whole entire counsel, the whole counsel of God. Notice verse 31. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. Watch and remember. Dear friends, do these two things, would you? Watch and remember. Remember what you've been told and watch for it. Watch for those wolves. Watch for those things that come into your life that keep you from serving the Lord. Watch and remember that the warning's been given. Warning's been given that people will come in and try to pervert the gospel of Christ and pervert the truth that you've been taught in Scripture. Don't let it happen. People may look innocent. They may look docile. They may look harmless. But they're not. We must watch and remember. Watch and remember, he says. It's more blessed to give to others. Notice verse 34. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. Paul used his hands. 
And we shouldn't be ashamed of that. Paul used his hands to minister to his own needs and the needs of others so that they would not be chargeable to him. He said, I have showed you all things. How that's so laboring. Sometimes it's labor. But we ought to labor. That you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus. How he said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. When you give to others, you'll find it is a satisfying, gratifying, fulfilling life when you give to others. It is more blessed to give to others. Then notice the third thing, will you please? It is more blessed, more blessed to give yourself. It is more blessed to give yourself. Now, we talked about giving to the Lord. We talked about giving to others. But now, this is where I want to bring it today. And that is giving yourself. Now please understand, I, I'm not talking about giving your talents. I'm not talking about giving your time. I'm not talking about giving something. I'm not talking about giving money. I'm talking about giving yourself. Giving your whole self. Notice what he says, please, in verse 22. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. Now, notice verse 24. But none of these things move me. How is it, Paul? None of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. You know what Paul's talking about here? giving his life. He said, none of these things move me. I go to these cities knowing that the, the Holy Spirit is telling me, you will be suffering bonds and afflictions. But he says, they don't move me. None of these things move me. I don't even count my life dear unto myself because I'm willing to give myself, not just give something, but to give myself that I might finish my course with joy, the course that God has given me, to finish it with joy, and the ministry which God has given me uh, to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And what I find here in this passage is that he's not just talking about giving something, but giving his life completely to the calling of God and the course that God has given him, giving himself completely to God. And when we talk about giving, the most important thing you can do is not give money. Although it's great. We appreciate it. The most important thing is not giving your time. The most important thing is giving yourself to God. Yourself. Giving yourself to Him. Have you ever done that? Have you ever given yourself to God and full and complete surrender? Maybe you feel like you have nothing to give. Maybe you feel like you have nothing to give. You have yourself to give. You have yourself to give. The hymn writers talk about it. Simply to his cross I cling, because I have nothing to give but myself. The Word of God says, He beseeches us by the mercies of God to present ourselves a living sacrifice. In Romans 12, 1 and 2. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. He doesn't say give something, but he says present yourself a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. All to him I owe. Have you ever given yourself to God? He says, I don't count my life dear unto myself, so that, I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I have received to testify the gospel of the grace of God 
I've given myself completely to the Lord. Completely to the Lord. You may not have much you think you can offer. Much that you can give. But that's not the point. We give ourselves. We give ourselves. This is a, there's a difference between just giving something or giving something that you have versus giving yourself to God. And every person, that's not just for a preacher. That's not just for a pastor's wife. That's not just for someone who serves in full-time ministry or something of that nature. That's not what it is. But every single one of us needs to give ourselves completely to God. Completely to God. Say, Lord, my life's not my own belongs to you. And when we give ourselves to God, what happens then? We find that we have something to give. Something to give to the Lord. Something to give to others. Because we've given ourselves to God. And then you'll find, in that life, you'll find that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Let's bow in prayer together, may we? Father, thank you for the Word of God, how it speaks to us. Lord, um, I pray that the message was clear. I pray that the point was gotten across. We need to give ourselves completely to Christ. And then you'll help us to give in those aspects areas of our lives that we need to give. May we not think of giving as something only that we can give, but we, may we give ourselves completely to you, voluntarily yielding ourselves. Lord, I pray if there's someone here today that has never taken that step of giving themselves completely to you, I pray that they would today give themselves to Christ completely. And then to find that it is more blessed to give than to receive.